Hey guys, welcome back to the Coin Shop Podcast. My name is Kenny Duncan Jr. This is my brother Matthew, and a special guest today we have um, is from Sarasota, Florida. Uh, he is the vice president, executive vice president of CCG um, NGC. His name's Andy Salzberg, and he's he's here to talk to us a little bit about um, NGCX. Now, NGCX has been a hot button topic that a lot of people have been asking us to bring some clarity to. Um, we've been a little bit busy with the holidays, and I caught up with Andy at the fun show. Uh, we chatted a little bit about it, and we decided we could get to knock this out this week. So we're really glad to have Andy here with us. Um, Andy, give us a brief intro of who you are um, and, and kind of what got you here to this point, and then let's get right into NGCX. Yeah, absolutely. So Again, my name is Andy Salzberg, Executive Vice President of Certified Collectibles Group. And, um, you know, so that that encompasses all of our verticals. However, my primary focus is to run NGC. Um, so uh, that's our, our obviously our coins verticals. So that's from sales, marketing, operations, et cetera. Um, the only place that I really um, uh, don't get involved in the day to day is the grading. I know that I am not an expert grader. I know enough to be dangerous, but we don't want dangerous in grading. We want consistent. We want accurate. We want reliable. So I'll take um, dangerous a few I, days. In I your like dangerous. Room. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> let, let me know so, when y'all get dangerous. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I'll let you know. I don't think that's coming at on the pike anytime soon. NGC dangerous doesn't have a good good ring to it, but. Um, we uh, we have obviously Rick Montgomery, Mark Salzberg, Keith Moon, uh, you know the, the Scott Schechter. The list goes on and on in terms of the the number of of incredible world class experts that we have. That so so that's in great hands. And um, so I, my my goal is to really grow that vertical. And um, and it's been a great uh, few years. Um, uh, and how I oh how I got into to to this position I, I was on the other side of the table I was I was one of the largest submitters uh, for NGC running um, uh, product development digital marketing and um, and operations for asset marketing and we operated under a few different brand names Modern Coin Mart Gov Mint we have a company in Hong Kong called LPM um, primarily focused on 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 Boolean in, in Asia. Um, and, uh, so that kind of got me, I was there for 12 years between, uh, and worked a, a number of different jobs. So I was really exposed to many different areas of the hobby and, uh, was looking for a change. I had, you know, again, I, I was there 12 years. And, and so, um, this just felt like a really natural fit because I had kind of the, the perspective of the customer that I could bring to the table. What are the customers looking for? Right. Um, Cause I was always the one um, kind of in your shoes. I was the always one, you know, picking up the phone and screaming at NGC uh, about the things that I was either upset with or that needed to be changed or that, um, you know, any, any issue that arose um, that they, they were going to hear about it. So um, I, did you call Scotty uh, and bust his chops? Oh, Scotty, Steve, uh, um, you know, Mark. I mean, I was negotiating at some points with my own father, which was always interesting. Um, but I got a feeling you got beat. <laughs> not, you know what? You know, it's sometimes I won, sometimes he won. Let's put it that way. But uh, it was a it, it it was a fair fight, and uh, um, and in some ways, not a fair fight. So, um, but. It's it's an incredible challenge. It's a completely different business than what I'm used to. Um, but over the course of the last year and a half, I've gotten a complete education on all of the different uh, facets of our business. Uh, how uh, intense of an operation this is. I mean, our customers are demanding, and we we want to meet that demand. I mean, we we don't want to fall short. We want to um, under promise and over deliver. So. Uh, that's that's really our goal. But getting into NGCX a little bit, so we we had uh, this was not a decision that was taken lightly. There was so much discussion and so much collaboration that went into this. I mean, we talked to uh, a few of our customers. We talked to you know we obviously talked internally as an executive team, and but at the end of the day, the goal was um, to bring a product to market that could be easily understood uh, by a customer that was looking to get into coins 
but didn't doesn't understand certification, grading, or the Sheldon scale, the 70-point scale. So this was something we felt that was really intuitive. You know, the 10-point scale is used across almost all of our other verticals aside, aside from PMG. Um, and it, it's, it's something that works incredibly well. Uh, you, you see the 10-point scale being used worldwide, not just for collectibles, but for, for other, for other industries. And so again, well, I, I, the, let, let me, let me jump in there real quick. I mean, yeah. I, as a five-year-old, a matter of fact, as my daughter's three, I asked her on a scale of one to 10, how much do you love your daddy? Yeah, so you use the <laughs> right. you use the ten point scale already. As yeah, you, you're your yes. ten point scale in yeah. it when you you know that's just kind of always been the standard, right? Yeah, on a scale of one to ten, how hot is you know? <laughs> yeah. Right. I mean, I'm sorry, yeah, sorry to be that way, but I mean, it's a yeah, but like it's. I mean, you think about the the Olympics, the NBA dunk contest, the you know, the, there's so many different yeah. things that are evaluated on a ten point scale. So we felt like yeah, you guys are not reinventing the wheel with the, with the ten point scale. <laughs> I'm exactly. Sorry. Yeah. Right? Exactly. I mean, but. But you are basically trying to, you know, be a segue from people who collect, you know, baseball cards, football cards, et cetera, cards yeah. to comic books comics, and, yeah. you know, kind of integrate it the same way. I find it interesting. Well, and I don't find it that interesting because I understand it on, on the business side of things. But you guys come out with modern. So yeah. Yeah. that's kind of the start. So tell me yeah. a little bit about that, you know, just for pe- maybe for people who don't necessarily understand modern. Yeah, so I'll give you guys um, the quick sort of um, explanation as to why we launched it the way we launched it. Because there was everything was there were there was a thought process behind everything that we did, um, and so this was a huge risk for us. I mean, as you guys know, uh, the modern side of our business. So you know whether it's super modern material that's just been produce like brand new 2023 silver eagles that we're grading now uh or uh stuff coming out from the world mints or you know even backdated material uh backdated silver eagles gold eagles uh pandas etc that's really the the you know the bread and butter that's like a that's a huge driver of our business and so we were taking a massive massive risk and we we thought that um First of all, we we wanted to keep it really tight. We only allowed a, a, a small group uh, of dealers that met a certain revenue threshold uh, into the program. And the reason for that was, again, like I said, this was a huge risk. So if this came out and we just fell on our freaking face and we looked really, really dumb, then it would be easier for us to sort of pull this back. If we launched, if we if we let it op- if we open it up to everybody it would have been a much more cumbersome, much more involved process to try and back that up. So that was, that was for that purpose, um, or, or the reason we kept it tight from a, from a participant perspective, that was the reason, uh, in terms of why modern and why not, why not expand it to every, every category of coins was because, um, we felt like the, the, the marketer, the the folks that were really going to be selling these this product, they were they're they're primarily going to use modern coins to test it. Um, so and that and that's what we wanted. We didn't want to see just this floodgate open and everybody's grading everything on on the ten point scale and and either abandoning the seventy point scale or creating confusion. So we wanted we wanted this to be sort of a slow build. People to really think about how they market this how they reach a new audience um, before they just build up a bunch of inventory and then are forced to dump it or reholder it or whatever. We wanted, we wanted people to take a pretty thoughtful approach to how they incorporate this into their business. Because I mean, at the end of the day, your success, you know, like U S coins success is, is uh, a precursor for NGC success. I don't succeed unless you do. So, um, you know, that was the goal was to broaden the scope of the participants or the people that are enjoying this hobby, uh, and really open it up. Um, and you know, it, we felt like somebody was going to do this at some point and we figured, why not us? Why not us be, let us be the innovators. Let us take the risks. Let us, you know, be the, the, the first one out there. And, 
Um, you know, if it, if it works, that's fantastic. If it fails, you know, we gave it our best shot. And, and uh, you know, so I'm, I'm, I'm proud of this company for, for taking that risk. I think initially, so, okay. So I'm going to put my collector hat on. Okay. Yeah. Um, you know, obviously U.S. Coins, our company has an affiliation with NGC and NGCX. Okay. Um, but stepping aside of it, because I, I always try to think, and like you said too, I mean, going back to what you said in the beginning, it's all about the collector. So, and how do we strengthen the hobby? How do we further the hobby? How do we get more people interested in the hobby? So for that, I thought NGC X was okay. I liked it. I thought it was actually pretty, I mean, it's not the first time we've ever discussed it happening. You know, exactly. I mean, this is something that we've talked about for a long time Yeah, because we have, you know, very well that we do com- You've been to my store. You've seen all the thousands of baseball cards and comic books and all the memorabilia, Babe Ruth baseballs, all the crazy stuff that we have. And obviously everything in that category is all based on the 10 point scale. Right. I, and yeah. You know, when you get into coins, obviously anybody that's gotten into a coins understands the Sheldon scale and and understands the seventy point scale. And um, you know, obviously modern would be the perfect way to to kind of bring that and kind of s- slide that in. Yeah. At the end of the day, what is best for the collector, though, right? So, you know, I, I see it good and bad in some ways. It, like you said, it, it is going to be something that it could catch on really well. And then you look, let's look two, three years, four or five years in the future. Is there some like merging of hobbies where, you know, you, you remember there used to be a couple guys who would set up at Long Beach of a couple card guys. And I always mm-hmm. looked for them because I was like, man, I'm going to go buy something cool from them. Yeah. Because, right. and, but then they get, they were gone and I don't know what happened. And I always wondered, I was like, so if NGCX takes off and, 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 and you guys start getting into, I mean, once you get your bearings, you're going to work, you're going to have some time where there's a lot of kinks to work out. I mean, anytime you bring and introduce something new, um, you know, you're going to get complaints from, you know, your Joe Blow submitter because he can't submit NGCX directly. He's going to have to go through someone else that yeah. may or may not be, you know, that could it's not I mean, ideal. That could yeah. turn some people off. Yeah, I mean, let's just be honest yeah. about it. But at the same time, sure. at the same time, it, I kind of think it's a good way to cross promote hobbies. And if you listen to any of my prior podcasts, Patrick Ryan was on here recently. Yep. This guy yep. is like the memorabilia. Anything in the world you want to know about anything. This guy, in terms of sports memorabilia and you know, baseball cards. I bought some really cool stuff. And this guy, this guy has a flu game Jordan Jersey. Yeah. That's so let, let me just say that again. The guy owns the flu game Jordan Jersey. Okay. That's the type of collector this guy is. Okay. He is a fascinating individual, fascinating to listen to fascinating in his knowledge of this whole spectrum. And him and I talked about NGCX months and months and months ago before you guys, before it all came out and I asked him his opinion and he was like, that'd be cool to be able to look in people's cases at card shows. Because if you've been to a card show and then you go to what we saw at fun, you're like, dude, it's not even <laughs> close. Like you're, I mean, there's right. like freaking people dancing and you fucking shit. You know, it's nuts, right? These card shows are really freaking cool. Coin shows yeah. are coin shows, you know, they're so, work. Their work, man. And and if in a perfect world, it'd be cool to see the two kind of converge and, you know, kind of be cool to pair it with. Um, and we talked about, like you said before, special issues, right? So you're not going to stop at just modern. Then it's the next rollout. Is it special? Give, give us a little bit about the rollout. And I, yeah. I'm not holding you into anything, but just kind of give me an idea, kind of like a little, you know, kind of give me a little, a little sneak into the future. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. So um, the first thing I want to say is that I do think there is crossover and that there is opportunity for people that collect cards to now, you know, it's now they can collect something that's more intuitive to them uh, and it's easier for them to get into, uh, into coins. But I will tell you, like from my experience, selling coins, both wholesale and retail, 
more, no, actually, I should shouldn't say wholesale. Just primarily retail customers who have never bought a coin before. You know, the question we always get, like the number one question we always got was, well, "Why seventy? Yeah. I, what what is what's so what's so important about seventy? And then we'd have to explain it to them. But so we're hoping to remove as many barriers as possible to creating new customers. And and so it might be the first collectible they've ever bought it might be the or or they might have only been collecting comic books and now they now they're like okay i'll i'll try coins i might give it a shot like at at least if we can get them to even think or consider it more so than they did before then then i feel like we're we're on the right track in terms of the future you know we haven't we obviously haven't we, we haven't shipped a single coin yet i mean we just got in um silver eagles uh this this week on Tuesday, and uh, and we're trying to, to process process all of that. But so can you um, can you give us any indication about how the twenty twenty threes look? I mean, how are they grading at NGC? Give us a little bit. Yeah. yeah. So the you know we're always nervous before we get in our first pallets of silver eagles, and um, some years are aren't great. I mean, as as you know, and and but this year the quality is fantastic. I'm really happy so far. I'm, I'm hoping that, that, you know, this continues. Um, we're seeing uh, percentages anywhere from 70 to 85 percent. Um, so it's 70 really pass through. 70 percent boxes. That no, I get it. 70%. No, but I'm saying 70s right. or pat just things that are that are 69 and better. No, 70, wow. 70. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So it's it's been really really good quality so far you know we're not seeing some of the spotting issues we have in the past we're not seeing so super lustrous wolf well, just full struck beautiful coins beautiful are they 2012 looking or are they like 2008 looking uh, you know they're they're 2012 looking okay. more so they're they're Thank really you. like they're fully full, struck full struck and flashy i yeah. like those flashy they're like they're they're gorgeous Sweet. and so our, our, our graders came in immediately. We're like, these are the best, these are the best quality silver Eagles we've seen in the last, you know, five years or something. And, um, so I was really happy to, to, to hear that because that just, that makes our job a little bit easier. It's not, it's not, you know, it's not a ton easier, but it's a little bit easier in terms of obviously dealers such as yourself who have, uh, customers that you're servicing, we now, and you have massive orders that you place with us. Now we don't have to go through as many coins to get, to there. get to the number of seventies that you need to fulfill your orders. Right. So it, it just makes it easier for kind of everybody. You don't have as many rejects to deal with. You don't have, you know, it, it's just, it's a, it's a nice, uh, it's a nice bonus for us. So I was, I was really happy, uh, to, to see that. Well, it's a great bonus for the customer too, right? So you get a yeah. nice, beautiful, flashy coin that, you know, looks true and is true and, and as it should be made. And, yeah. you know, I think, well, cool. I'm excited about those coming down the pipe. Um, so, you know, I shared with you a little bit, you know, just kind of in passing and talking a little bit about NGCX. Um, I do see great potential in the, using the right forum and, 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 and carried out the right way. I think it's probably not, I liked it. It's something that honestly we've spoken about before. Like how cool yeah. would it be to have a comic book coin you know, a Black Panther coin, you know, and, and, and obviously something that's limited edition. You don't want, you know, not something they made 25 or 30,000 of or, you know, millions of like a Silver Eagle or something, but just a little bit more niche, right? Mm-hmm. So I'm going to really go out there and do some really cool packaging and be able to kind of combine the two. You know, you got comic books you can involve in there. And obviously that's just a small fingernail of, of a business model. It, it's not enough to really completely no. jump into. No, but, but it's cool for the business. But, but again, to your point, now there are new opportunities for for putting together those kinds of packages, and you know it 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 is really exciting uh, to see some of the new ideas um, that people have come up with. I mean, I can't tell you how many people at the fun show came up to me and were so excited about NGCX, and they were they were already their brains were already kind of moving and and churning and um, thinking about the different things that they can now do with sports cards and a coin or, or comic books and a coin or, um, you know, it, it's, it's, I, I think you're right though. It, it's gotta be, um, sort of 
test it out and and it's something that we've we're gonna have to see how things go but in terms of the future and and the way that this would progress you know the hope is that this isn't just a um a, a bulk program that is limited to to 12 dealers we're we're hoping that we can open this up to everybody we're hoping that there's there's mass appeal here um and we're also hoping that there's opportunity to um uh, to to change the um, uh, to go from strictly modern and an opening up the number of categories that we offer this scale on. I mean, I I mean, I think about how we we have to get it right, and we need to make sure that this works. But I mean, how exciting would it be to see like a, a Morgan Silver Dollar in nine five? Yeah, yeah I know, was just I was just gonna say, it's eventually gonna lead to some people. I mean, look, one thing and driven, driven by money, monies are driven by markets, markets, you know, it's, so you're going to see if it, if the thing, if it takes off as it should initially, um, and if it can, if it holds its weight, I mean, I think it could be good. I think, I think it's definitely on the right track and in, in mind of what I've heard from consumers over the years about not, it's not, no one's going to walk up to you and say, I'm not going to buy this coin because I don't understand the Sheldon scale. Right. I mean, if you like coins, you like coins. Like yeah. it, if you like coins, you've been buying either a PCGS or NGC coin since 1984 or five, right. Or 86 or whatever you've been buying certified coins. It's always been the Sheldon scale. Yeah. So I don't think you're not going to not sell coins, but this is a cool way to get that person who might've been on the fence about coins that, exactly. that, that is in, that is in comics. Or, yeah. And now it's easy. It's, re it's relatable. Yeah. So They're, to me, I thought, wow, that's a pretty cool idea and if yeah. you can get see to me i'm just you know the modern side of it i like to look a little bit past the modern side because the modern's already there you guys are already doing that that's already part of it um are you guys going to do labels are you going to do special labels is it going to be yeah. yeah so it's going to yeah, be absolutely. open wide open okay absolutely all the same things that we would do on the 70 point scale we will okay. do on the 10 point scale the other thing i was going to mention is because you you had said you know we we talked about this you know many years ago and and so did all of it. Like I, I find now that one, now that this has come out, you know, I've had so many people come up to me and say, man, we thought about that. You know, I don't believe half of them. Later. What? I don't believe half of them. <laughs> you don't believe, well, or they, what, they at least thought about it. Like, cause I remember talking to, uh, to Scotty about, you know, uh, when I was back at Modern Coin Mart and with John Maven, you know, Hey, have you guys ever thought about grading, you know, at that point, it didn't seem plausible to grade vintage coins on a ten-point scale. So my, it was I only asked him about modern. But I said, "Have you guys ever considered grading coins on a ten-point scale?" And Scotty was like, "Yeah, we actually have, have talked about it and we've thought about it. Not that it was the right time to to pull the trigger. I think um, now was uh, there was never a right time for something like this. But yeah. I think yeah. this was as best as it could be. Um, and uh, I'm hoping that, you know, with some people getting behind it and, and, and getting enough exposure to it that there, there is some adoption. I, I certainly don't want people to abandon the 70 point scale. I think it's really critical. Um, I think it, it makes a ton of sense for, uh, you know, it's been, it's been a part of our mantra, been a part of our vernacular for, uh, you know, for 40 years uh, plus, you know, uh, just starting with the beginning of the grading services, but going, obviously going way past uh, before that as well. But it's, I, I want people to, to think about this and think about how they, um, how they reach a new audience. Now, now they might think about placing a coin ad somewhere they might not have in the past. Like yeah. they might yeah. place a coin ad in a, in a, in a, uh, a card publication uh, and before they might've not. And so price guiding like a Beckett or, you know, something like, in yeah. The, yeah, you're going to, now you're going to put, you know, exactly. And, and again, if that's the core belief, okay. If that's NGC standpoint and the core belief, the absolute to its bare bones, this is going to touch other people in the hobby or around the hobby that may or may not have gotten in without this, if that's its core belief, I think it's awesome. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And that's, it's that's awesome. The belief. That's the, that's the hope anyway, yeah. is that I think if, I think it's there, it, what I'm, what doesn't work is if it's another way to 
you know, make money on modern, right? It's got to yeah, grow. It, it's got to grow it, from there, right? You got yeah, it. We wouldn't if it if that was the thesis. It would. It just wouldn't work. Like if if it was just a, uh, you know, um, if the, if it was just a, a a way to make money, um, then this would just be a flash in the pan. It would. Die. But we're like we're committed to this. We want we want to we're we want to put. I mean, there's going to be like there's going to be an incredible amount of investment that will go into developing uh, population reports and how this in- incorporates with the registry. And I can't I mean, imagine it's gotta be a back end so, nightmare. Yeah. So it's like, this is not a profitable endeavor for us in the beginning by any stretch of the imagination. Yeah. So, don't get me wrong. I wasn't alluding to that. No, no, no. But my, my point is, question. is that you're, you're, well, you're going to have two sides, right? You're going to have, Hey, listen, this is our core belief. We're going to try to take this and try to integrate this with people who already understand this part of the world. Okay. And make an easy segue for them to get into coins. Yeah. If that's it, that's great. And I've, and I've said yeah. that from day one, I'd like to even see, you know, some paper money in the future. Oh, that'd be cool. Right? Like he said, wouldn't it be cool to see an 81 S dollar in 9.5, you know, or yeah. like, yeah. you know, you have that coin that like, there's a couple coins that I've sent to you guys <laughs> recently that, <laughs> Man, they, they they look like nines to me that I'll never sell for eights. But you know, to get that eight point nine on there or something, you know, that'd sure. be cool to be able to see. But man, do you want to talk about a grading set? Oh my gosh, could oh, yeah. you imagine? Yeah, uh, um, could yeah. you imagine? Or could a be, type or a type set in? Well, because you're basically it's a hundred point grading scale now, right? Yeah, so yeah, essentially, yeah. now you'd have to have a hundred coins, and then man, whew, that would be it would that, be cool. Well, like a if there there is just to be clear, there there aren't a hundred grades in the 10 point scale. There are, there is, we, we didn't want to, we didn't want to boil the ocean at when it gets to the lower yeah, end. So, so do you cut off grade. at five or something? I, I kind of breezed through it. I should have looked at it maybe tougher. So if, for those that um, want to learn more about NGCX, there is a full landing page and there's also this really cool tool that allows you to see, okay, okay, this it's there's a sliding yeah. scale and you can actually see like okay what's an AU58 on the 10 point scale oh it's an 8.8 .8. oh that that makes oh, sense cool. and then you go we're going to pull down. it up we're going to pull it up for our customers i mean for our customers for our uh, listeners right now uh, let's, okay. let's pull this bad boy cuz i actually was looking at it but you know what i didn't uh okay yeah so you do a slider okay so you basically after okay, so 5.5, 6.5, 7.5, 8.3, and then 8.5. Okay, so similar to your card grading in some aspects. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, it's similar to our card grading, and and um, it's it you know, because cool. once you start getting down to like, yeah, you know, good and things like, like how you know, how many different grades do you need? Yeah, no, you don't. Below yeah. fine. I mean, it's it's just it's uh it become you're really splitting hairs in some cases. Yeah, that'd be a little uh, that uh, would be a little that, much. Yeah, that might for sure. Yeah, so and but to your Matt, you you raised a good point about paper money. We've been asked quite a bit um especially, you know, after the launch of NGCX about how we're thinking about paper money and if if anything's coming down the line there. It is yeah. something we're going to explore. We're going to look at it. I actually, that's the meeting I have directly following this one, <laughs> believe oh, it or cool. not, about it. Yeah. Um, and and I don't know if it makes sense for notes across the board, but it might make sense for some um, because yeah. there are a lot of people that put programs together with things like the, uh, you know, the gold and silver foil yeah. notes and things like that that are much more modern. Yeah. Um, but, you know, we'll see. We're, 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 we, this is very new for us and uh, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to get too far out over my skis. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think you guys came out the right way. I mean, it, it's easy for somebody to understand a silver Eagle. I mean, especially in 2023, if they come out as nice as you say they are, it's going to make it even easier. Right. Yeah. yeah. You Man, gotta they are. A, you got to have a nice eye appealing coin. You know, you don't want that kind of look. Yeah. Well, cool. Exactly. I'm excited. You got anything else you want to tell us? Tell us a little bit about, um, so what's NGC doing in 2023? What's the outlook? What's the feeling like? I yeah, mean, you guys looked upbeat. Everything was, you know, you guys, you know, your dad was walking around, you know, he, everybody looked pumped up. Tell me what's going on. Yeah. So we had a, we had a really good 2022, despite 
you know, not having some of the big volume drivers. Like, we, you know, 2021 was obviously a huge year because you had two Silver Eagle seasons. You had Morgan and Peace dollars. You had emergency production issues. You had all of these. It was a perfect storm, right? 2022 really had none of that. You had you had one Silver Eagle season. Yeah. You had a few commemoratives. No special. Um, yeah, very. And the, they, they were very so-so. There were... No, yeah, not a lot of volume in the, in those uh, commemoratives. Some, but um, but not not a lot. So, but we we really had a good year. But we had to work our butts off for it. And um, and I think twenty twenty three is going to be uh, kind of much of the same. I think we're going to have to really work our butts off and deliver on you know customer service, turnaround times, uh, you know uh, product development, all of those areas that that we try we strive to be the best in we're going to have to hit on all cylinders to, to hit to, to get to where we think we can get to. Like we have, we obviously have revenue projections and things like that. Blackstone is obviously, you know, demanding from that perspective. They want to know what we think we're going to do. Of course, of course, and of course. <laughs> yeah. You know, so, um, and we have some pretty lofty goals in 2023, but at the same time, we're not oblivious to the fact that there are some headwinds. I mean, we have, there is some market softening in certain areas there, you know, you've got interest rates that, that are rising uh, or have risen dramatically. You've, you know, combined with inflation. So people have a little bit less discretionary income to spend on the, the things that they love like collectibles, but, but historically coins have performed okay in, in, in downturns and in, in the economy and, um, not that they've gone, you know, not that they've boomed either. Um, but we have Morgan and Peace dollars coming out this year. Um, you know, we're 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 really hopeful that the mint is is thinking about developing some some new exciting programs for 2024, 2025, and obviously the the huge year that it should be the 250th anniversary of the of the signing of the Declaration of Independence in in 2026. 26, yeah, that's so, going to be awesome. So I'm I'm really really hoping that um, you know that's um, uh, you know uh, uh, you know, we have a few great years coming up. But our, the outlook for 2023, I'll put it to you in two words: cautiously optimistic. That is, yeah. that's where we're at. You know, we're, we we've had we've had a great run, but I'm also you know uh, I'm. I'm I'm always the serial, you know, Scott Heller would always say that I'm, I'm always the serial pessimist, you know, like I'm, I'm the one that's going to ask, you know, the, you know, the, the, I'm seeing the, the worst case scenario, always preparing for the worst, hoping for the best is how I always try and treat everything that I do uh, from a business perspective. But, um, you know, so we, we were going to have to put in the effort this year. We were going to have to really get after it. We're going to have to, um, you know, be pounded on your door for more coins, but, but we're, we have to do it in a way I'm, I'm kidding, obviously, but we have to do it in a way that makes sense for our you're customers. Not, you're not kidding. No, I'm not. I, I'm, <laughs> I'm kidding. And I'm not kidding by that. I mean, if, if they're, if we're not creating value for you and our, and our customers in general, why are they going to submit coins to us? They, they do it for a reason, right? Because, you know, it, it preserves the coin they, they, it, or it can, they think it's going to sell for more money, um, or they're, they're preserving it for their, you know, they're passing it down to their, to their grandkids or their kids, uh, or it's, it's just something that they love and they enjoy and they have a collection that they're continuing. Um, but if we're not creating those programs that provide excitement for, for companies such as yourselves, then we're not doing our jobs. And, and so we have to continue to sort of keep our foot on the gas. Cool. Well, I, um, man, I congratulate you guys and, um, you know, wish you the best moving forward. Um, I think, like I said, I think it's a pretty good idea. Um, I don't see really any downside. I think it's cool. I think you're, uh, I think it's a good, like I said, a good segue for other people to kind of get off the fence and say, oh, okay, I can, now I can relate or now it's more relative and right. But yeah. Yeah. I appreciate that a lot. I appreciate that a lot. A lot of work went into this. Um, I've got a question for you though. Is sure. that, is that actually a game worn Altuve Jersey? Yeah. So it's a game worn Altuve Jersey. And then I've got my game worn Alvar uh, Jordan Alvarez Jersey. And I've got my favorite right here. 
This is my King Griffey Jr. rookie season, 1989 rookie season um, autograph uh, jersey. Oh, my yeah. God. That is so freaking cool. So, Ken Griffey, I worship the guy. Yeah. I, I mean, he, I, I had – there was no one – in baseball, I had more fun watching. Oh, you and me both. I mean, he was by far the absolute. He's the only sports player that I'll spend money on. Um, yeah. I, if I, something comes I up mean, of his and it's stupid money, if it's rare, I'm going to buy it. And, you know, there shouldn't be anybody out there to stop me. Yeah, I mean. <laughs> I mean. In spite. Yeah, yeah right. I'm going to buy it. <laughs> so be ready. <laughs> I mean, Ken if something Griffey cool does, comes up and it's one on one or something, and it's Griffey. It's mine. I'm always looking for Griffey. I feel like that is such a good bet. Just from, I mean, just from a, I even for, take the investment side off the table. Like Griffey, the athleticism. Oh, he's such on a that stud. I mean, the guy I mean, he's a could, stud. He play. I mean, didn't he play like six sports or something in high school? Like the guy was just a freak of nature. Let me I mean. tell you what the guy did. The guy had the prettiest swing in baseball. That's what he oh, had. You know, not. And he caught balls in the center field and covered so much ground out there that you just. I mean, I don't think people realize how much of an athlete that guy was. He was. He turned the entire game of baseball around in the eighties and nineties. You know, yeah, he really did. And him getting hurt. How cool was it to see him play with his dad? Oh, dude, it was the best. And I, I just, I recently, so I was talking uh, to a friend of mine earlier, Patrick Ryan, who, like I mentioned earlier in the podcast, is a mm-hmm. big sports guy. But he sold me a Griffey's card. So it's it's the Griffey's. I think it was an 89 score um, when it had father and son. And it's both in the signet, uh, autographed by both by uh, father and son. It's a really cool piece that I bought. That is so cool, dude. Yeah. So I'm a huge I'm- Griffey fan. I am legitimately jealous of that. That is really cool. This walked in the the count over the counter, and I bought a bat, the matching bat with it. Yeah. Oh my God. Dude, it walked in over the counter. Some lady's like, "I got this, King Griffey Jr." I was like, "Uh, you found the right person." I said, like, "How much do you want for it?" And she told me something stupid. I was like, "Okay, you know what? I'm not even going to argue with you." Sold. I wrote that a check. Awesome. And she was happy as could be. And I, I came back and I was like trying to like just, you know, kind of play it off because I don't, I just happened to be walking by and I got to the back and I was like, yeah, let's go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was like, look at this. I could, I was showing everybody. I couldn't, I was so happy. So uh, yeah, yeah, that is like, I mean, it's, it's so iconic. Um, and, and to, to see that you have, I mean, it's, it's great that, you know, uh, to see everybody has their little areas that they're passionate about. So it, you know, some people it's some people it's Morgan Van varieties and for others, it's Ken Griffey Jr. You know what yeah. I mean? It's, I love that. That's why I love collectibles. I love, there's so much nuance. There's so many, there's so many, if you are looking for something cool, unique, you know, there's something for everybody. Well, you guys uh, certify them. Tell me just a little bit, just go over all the companies real quick and just tell me exactly what C, uh, CCG certifies. So tell the audience, I mean, I know, but tell, yeah. tell everyone else. I mean, yeah. So we obviously else. started with coins. Um, and then, you know, you, so you have paper money, you have PMG. Uh, Let's go by the company PMG. just so we know, right? Just, PMG. Just, okay. Yeah. Then you have, you have CGC. So that's comics. Okay. Then you have CGC trading cards. So that's like Pokemon magic, et cetera. Um, and then you have CSG, so that's our, our sports card grading business. Um, and then we do grade um, uh, movie posters uh, and um, uh, and other things. We, we also, uh, a lot of people don't know this, but in our comics business, um, we actually have something called CCS, and it's actually, it's a, ma- it's a pressing business, so it's able to actually press out some of the imperfections within the book. Um, and, it, and, in, and in many cases, it will actually improve uh, the eye appeal and the grade. So um, like an NCS for comic books, basically. Basically, yeah, but cool. yeah, but, but we're just not, um, there's no, we're not remo- necessarily removing anything from the comic book. It's just sort of, it just is a pressing process. Cool. Um, but then, uh, so that's comics. I covered sports. Um, we also have a company called CAG. Um, so that is the, that, that's kind of the catch all for things that are, that fall outside the, the realm of typical collectible categories. So I'll give you an example, like the, 
um, the um, Neil Armstrong collection that was auctioned off in 2019 um, was certified by CAG. So p- pieces of the Wright Flyer that went to the moon um, in, in 1969, um, there was a, a, a gold Robbins medal, which was one of three. So, so one for each of the astronauts. Um, and uh, this was actually Neil's personal Robbins medal, and it sold for well over a million dollars. You have CAG, and then we also do uh, stamps uh, in, but primarily in in Asia. Um, and then, so we don't really we don't have a domestic stamp business, although that's something that we're we're talking about. We're always talking about new verticals. Uh, and then we recently launched um, video games. Um, that's cool. So that's kind of a that's kind of the the breadth of the the categories that we cover but we're we're really hoping that we can add more um you know i'd love to to be able to certify and authenticate jerseys you know bats um you know there there's so many different things that we can get into we've talked about sneakers before we've you know but uh um there's always an analysis that we go through there's only so many hours in the day um so much space that we have too um so there's always careful consideration that goes into to launching a new vertical. It's 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 it is expensive. How um, many will, how many employees you guys? Empl- what is it, what does CCG employ? Six seven hundred employees. Uh, worldwide, uh, just over eight hundred. Okay, cool. Yep, yeah, well, that's awesome, man. Andy, I really appreciate you taking the time to uh, yeah. to give us a little introspect about. Um, about NGCX, a little bit about, you know, what NGCC is coming in in 2023. Cautiously optimistic, I think, is probably about an industry standard right now. Um, that's about yeah. the way we were at Q4 last year and, and the way that we are now. But, you know, like you said, there's not enough hours in the day, and you grind on and you just keep grinding, right? Yeah. And, um, you know, and whatever comes your way, you try to smash out of the park like Griffey. So, um <laughs> Yeah, that's a great ending. So, really appreciate your time, man. Thank you so much. Um, say hello to Pop for us, and um, good luck with NGCX, and hope everything works out. To um, you know, and again, most importantly, hope it works out for the collector because without the collector, we got nothing, right? Yeah, that's exactly right. So, and so, thank you guys so much for having me on. It was a pleasure, and uh, you know, just appreciate your support and the opportunity to to be here on on your on your uh, your podcast. So thank you so much. Awesome, man. We love having you, and we'll bring you back again soon. Okay. All right. Take care. All right, man. See take ya. care, Andy. Take Thanks. care. Bye bye. Bye bye. All right, guys. That wraps up this uh, podcast. Appreciate you guys joining in. Uh, we'll get back to all of our standard kind of segments. Um, we're just again trying to get back from the front show and get um, get back organized and. Um, you know, and just get rolling. So we appreciate your support in 2022. Hope to have in 2023, coinshoppodcast.com, uscoinsandjewelry.com. Thank you guys so much for tuning in, and we appreciate it. Bye-bye. I'm ready for late-night television. Yep. Johnny.